This program is rated PG. It contains themes and scenes which may not be suitable for very young audiences. Parental guidance is advised. Be advised that the views and opinions of the hosts and guests do not reflect those of the station. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Global Village. I'm Buddy Kunanan. Now, you know, folks, in this show, we take to amazing places to meet interesting people, and we also talk about topics and issues that impact the global community. Now, tonight is all about Ireland. It is a very special show because in a few days, we're going to be celebrating St. Patrick's Day, or St. Paddy's Day, as it's affectionately called, and also the monumental and much-awaited rugby game versus uh, Ireland versus England, which is part of the Six Nations uh, Rugby Tournament happening the same day. And so tonight is all about this beautiful place called Ireland. And uh, joining me to talk about uh, Ireland are two Irishmen living here in the Philippines. We have Michael O'Conroy, and he is the non-executive director for Talk BPO Ireland Limited. And uh, we have, of course, someone who's, very, who's been here a very long time, Brian Lane, former honorary consul of Ireland in the Philippines. So, gents, welcome to Global Village. It's a pleasure, pleasure to have you here. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Nice to be here, buddy. Very nice. And, you know, it's, it's a nice show because I've always been intrigued with Ireland. I thought I've always known it's a beautiful place. And now we have an opportunity to, you know, promote Ireland and make, uh, <coughs> make Filipinos aware of, of your country. And it's such an auspicious date as today, a few days before St. Paddy's Day. Yes. So, guys, let's talk about your backgrounds first. Let's start with uh, Michael. What, what brought you to the Philippines? Um, great question, uh, buddy. We um, originally were um, in India with... Uh, Talk BPO uh, call centers, and basically uh, things didn't work out for us. So we looked at South Africa and we looked at the Philippines, and uh, the fact that we found the Philippines to be very friendly, um, welcoming, uh, English language was fantastic for our business, uh, the skill sets, the time zones, um, basically the value for money to be here was main reasons for us to consider moving here uh, for business purposes. Yes, excellent, excellent, and. Uh Brian, you are the former honorary consul of, the of Ireland in the Philippines, and you've been here quite a long time, I understand, no? Uh, forever, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm heading, I'll be 76 next year, but I came here in my 40s. I came in 1979, which was the tail end of the Marcos, near, near the end of the Marcos era. Um, 
and found very quickly that there was an affinity that, that I, I found very comfortable. And I settled in very quickly. And I've been here ever since. So far, so good? Mostly. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it's interesting because you gents are obviously very at home here in the Philippines. Uh, it's now, it is your home. Yes, and, uh, it is. And what do you like most about the Philippines? What do you guys uh, enjoy, enjoy about this country? The weather. <laughs> it, it's, it's unbelievable. Like, you can basically wake up in the morning, have the air conditioning, go down to the lobby, have the air conditioning, then you walk out into um, basically the street and you have this humid air and the warmth of the air. Um, basically, you're in your shorts, you're in your flip-flops, your t-shirts. Um, try and do that today in Ireland. Um, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Brian? Um, for me, it's, it's mostly lifestyle. I must admit, I love the concept of having people... I, I hate to drive, for example. I hate to wash dishes. I hate to scrub floors. I love to have people doing things for me. Um, not, not in a... Not in a not, I don't want people to be servile. But Filipinos are so good at service, in, in whether it's medical, nurses, and so on. And the lifestyle here, you've got maids who take care of you like, like you're their own son. Uh, and you've got drivers who drive you around safely so I can enjoy my uh, Sauvignon Blanc. Um, so the, the overall lifestyle is just is wonderful. And, and, you know, you gents feel a lot at home here. Could it also be that there's also a lot of similarities between Philippine culture and, 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 and Irish culture? And the people are very, have similar temperaments, maybe? And, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, the culture, um, the harmony, the friendliness, um, the music. The music, yes, absolutely. Uh, I, I was saying, I, I, don't, I, I can't remember whether I made it up or I heard it from somebody else, that the Irish are the Filipinos of... Europe and the <laughs> Filipinos of the Irish of Asia, because of these, the, 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 the population size obviously is a huge differential. Yes. But, but our colonial background, we've suffered under colonial masters the way you have. Um, but on, on the positive side, we, we are, we're very outgoing people. Uh, I've always been made, we've been made to feel welcome here. Yep. Right, Michael? Yep. Um, and Filipinos uh, go abroad very easily. I mean, for the same reason that we did economic. Uh, I left Ireland for economic reasons. I was an OFW back in the 60s. Um, I ended up in, I went to UK, Germany, West Africa, back to the UK, and then eventually the Philippines. Yes. yes. Um, and I, I just love the culture. I just love the, the atmosphere, the lifestyle. It's, it's very welcoming. Yes, absolutely. And it's quite ironic. Um, things are changing now, where, as Brian alluded to, um, like the Filipino, we'd have to travel for work. And now, thankfully, with things picking up with investments, uh, tourism back into Ireland, um, we, we seem to see that there's a trend now of a lot of Irish people going back into the Isle of Ireland for work. Yes, yes. And, you know, even temperament, because, you know, I, as anyone who's traveled, uh, would, we would say and would know that there is an Irish pub everywhere, in, in, in almost any country you can think of. And I think anyone who's gone into an Irish pub would say you have that... That, that just just that friendly atmosphere, that casual, friendly atmosphere oh. re that relaxes you almost immediately when you enter. Yes. A and it's the same here. I mean, th you don't have Filipino pubs abroad, but a Filipino group, um, when you go into a, a, a restaurant abroad, you can, if there's a Filipino group, you know where they are. Yes. You can hear them. Yes. I mean, they're, they're, they're loud, they're noisy, but they're happy. <laughs> yes, and jolly. <laughs> and jolly. And, and, and Jolly Bee. And a long Speaking warm, of Jolly Bee, speaking yes. of Jolly Bee. Masarap. <laughs> uh, Masarap. Um, but the Irish are the same. We're, we're a bit loud and noisy, especially when we're drinking. But it's, it's happiness. It's not, um, it's, and it's not an aggressive noisiness. It's, 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 it's happy, happiness, yeah. basically. And, and we call it the crack. The, the crack. crack. Yeah, the crack. We like to enjoy the good crack. What does the crack mean exactly? Fun, you know. Um, it's, a, it's a Gaelic term. Yeah, yeah it's a Gaelic term. Basically, yeah. And, you know, the, the, the thing is, although we speak English the way you speak English, um, because it was forced on us the way it was forced on you guys, um, but we still have our Irish language. And in fact, the Irish language, I'm told, is the oldest living classical language in Europe. Interesting. Oh, um, wow. Okay. Not many people know that. Who, who said that? Who used to say that? Not, not uh, many people. You need to test my memory now. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> You're younger than me. Yeah. He's, supposed to, he's, a, he's supposed to remember these things. Exactly. 
but um, we call it Gaelic, as you can appreciate, and uh, sometimes um, the language um, was actually devised as code um, to evade capture, as you can appreciate, not only in the Philippines, mm. but also in Ireland. So we obviously developed our own dialogue, our own communication, our own code, so to speak, and today we still have that tradition in Celtic areas, yes. in the likes of Donegal, in County Kerry, and County Galway, and so on and so forth. Yes, and another interesting similarity between Philippines and, and, uh, and Ireland is that the, the Catholic faith, I mean, I'm, I'm not talking about Northern Ireland, but the Republic of Ireland at least. Um, uh, statistics says that 88% are Catholic, which almost mirrors the statistic here in the Philippines. 88% mm. or 85, 88% of Filipinos are ca Roman Catholic. And uh, it's interesting that uh, how did this whole thing develop, this, this Catholicism of, of Ireland? Well, originally, um, as you can appreciate, uh, you just mentioned it, St. Patrick, uh, obviously being, um, you know, the, uh, the patron saint of Ireland, um, he was a minister himself, and then obviously uh, basically uh, became a pope. Um, he's basically more spread, um, you know, Catholicism and Christianity uh, throughout uh, Ireland, although having uh, the tale being said, he was originally British as well. Yes, interesting, huh? interesting. He, well, he was Welsh. Oh, yes, <laughs> Welsh and British, apparently, according to the notes. <laughs> well, no, there was no Britain in those days. It was, it was, Wales was, was a separate um, clan. Yes. <coughs> and, um, but, but in what is now Britain. Yes, at that time, yes, that's yes. right, yes. So, uh, as far as our history is concerned, yeah, we're a bit vague on that. <laughs> Very good. Um, and then, you know, today Ireland's booming. Uh, I mean, yeah. Economically, uh, until the 2009 financial crisis, you guys had the second highest GDP in Europe. And, uh, you know, Dublin is the home of um, the headquar European headquarters where I was astonished. Eh? Big, big names like Google, yes. Microsoft, mm -hmm. Apple, IBM, Intel, Motorola, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. And um, what is it about Ireland that attracts these investments there? Right. Yep, the, the main reason um, that attracts um, the investments is because we are primarily the only English-speaking uh, uh, nation in, in Europe, so to speak, on the western side of Europe. In addition to that, um, it's good for the time zones for some of the uh, American companies and the European It's not companies. too far off from, it's kind of like in the middle. Correct, yes. correct. And the fringe benefits for taxation purposes are very attractive, as you can appreciate, um, with the likes of Google, the Accentures, and Apple. Um, where we're actually looking at uh, approximately 12.5% corporation tax and some honeymoon tax uh, rates, fringe benefits tax, uh, research and development tax uh, benefits as well. So those are some of the main draw cards. But not only that, um, we have the skilled labor force as well. We have the talent uh, labor force as well in Ireland. And uh, obviously, you know, we have the four seasons in Ireland, which, um, you know, basically a lot of people are accustomed to. Yes. What about here, Michael, before we close? How is... Uh the Irish presence here in the Philippines business-wise? Um, well, basically, um, we have um, IPAC, which is the Irish Philippine Chamber of Commerce. I'm one of the uh, outgoing presidents uh, of that uh, department. Um, basically, what we try to do is we try to influence um, some of the Philippine companies to consider looking at investing uh, in, in Ireland. But at the same time, I would say roughly we have about 12, maybe 15 Irish companies here. Here, yeah. Mm -hmm. Roughly, yeah. Give yeah. or take. Um, so basically, we are, uh, you know, experiencing some small, uh, slow progress um, into um, to the Republic of the Philippines. In addition to that, there are talks about double tax treaty. Um, the double tax treaty uh, is in negotiations okay. as we speak. So therefore, when you do incorporate in the Republic of the Philippines, um, you will not be subject to paying tax uh, in the Philippines and vice versa for Philippines. That should help spur business uh, and investment. Absolutely. 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 A major incentive. Absolutely. So no, no, no double taxation. That's Absolutely. great. Gents, we have to pause for a break. We can come back. We'll talk more about that, the activities of the Irish community in the Philippines, specifically business and culture. And of course, we'll talk about that uh, much awaited uh, day, St. Patrick's Day, which is happening this Saturday. Absolutely. So guys, stick Good around because time. more of Discover Ireland when Global Village returns. Where are we thinking about going or have, have we decided? Well, I think we should head west. Sligo, Mayo. I'd love to do the pony tracking on the beaches. They do that all along the coast. I work up an appetite for lunch. And definitely music. Just local music at a pub. Like a bit of dosa and rula bula. I might give you a song if you're lucky or unlucky. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we've planned that. Agreed. 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 Oh.